Hello dear students welcome back again to Chinmoy's biology channel so today we are here with the third part of the first lesson that is crop production and management so uh, I think till now you have already uh, gone through the first two episodes which I have taught you so there I have already completed till the traditional method of irrigation so today what we are going to study let's get started with that so today we are going to study about the modern methods of irrigation we are going to study about sprinkler system drip system protection from weeds and weedicides so if you want to learn more regarding this lesson and regarding the upcoming lessons which i'll be teaching as per your curriculum cbsc curriculum so stay tuned stay updated with all the lessons which i'll be posting please do subscribe to my channel and don't forget to share it with your friends so that all of your friends also can get the uh, knowledge of how uh, what I am teaching to you so stay tuned stay updated and let's get started with today's episode without further delay now today we are here we are starting with the modern methods of irrigation so uh, previously we have discussed about the traditional methods of irrigation so today the two major uh, modern methods of irrigation are sprinkler system and drip system so what is sprinkler system now this system you are all seeing this in parks and also this sprinkler system what is it doing it is actually uh, where the land where there is sufficient amount of water is not available and the land is uh, uneven there the sprinkler system has been uh, this has been uh, put because the, the perpendicular pipes are put and there is a rotating nozzle on the tip of the uh, perpendicular pipes and these are joined with the main pipeline so what is happening at regular intervals it keeps on sprinkling water from the main pipe and under pressure with the help of a pump system now these rotating nozzles as they keep on rotating what happens the full field that the the full agriculture region or the full uh, field which needs to be uh, watered it gets equal distribution of water by this sprinkler system and it gets sprinkled on the crops and if it is raining the um, uh, this uh, sprinkler system is not used now sprinkler is useful for lawns also in coffee plantation also and several other crops also now in uh, now if you are having a big lawn at home you can uh, put this sprinkler system that will keep on sprinkling water uh, throughout your full uh, lawn and if you are having small plants spotted plants then they then they will also uh, get to water from these um, uh, sprink uh, the sprinklers so this is one modern method of uh, putting water to plants now another system is there now this is this uh, this uh, diagram is a sprinkler system you can see uh, this uh, water is being sprinkled here through this uh, sprinkler system okay these are the sprinklers okay these sprinklers are this these are sprinkling water on the field and there is a pump is being attached which is attached to the main line and this main line is taking water to these perpendicular uh, uh, lines on with the rotating nozzle is being put and they are sprinkling water throughout the field now next comes the drip system so what is the drip system doing it is also uh, uh, placed in the places where the water is scarce and the water falls drop by drop so it is called the drip system so drip means drop by drop and it is uh, mainly placed near the roots so if this is the pump and this is the main pipeline these pipelines are placed in tube another tubes or uh, lines are placed near the roots where they drop by drop they uh, put water near the this uh, roots of the plant so there the here the water is being uh, put by drops right so it is being put by drops on the roots of the plant so here we can say that it is a drip system so here water is not at all wasted and it is a boon to the regions where the availability of water is very poor so these two are modern systems that is sprinklers and drip system now we move on to the protection from weeds so how these plants are being protected from weeds so protection of weeds uh, from weeds is very important now when they went bujo and paheli these two only went to their uncle's house in summer vacation right so when they went went to the nearby wheat field they saw some other plants also which are growing with the wheat plants so 
uh, what are they they wanted to know so these are all undesirable plants which are called weeds so these undesirable plants should be removed so the removal of weeds is called weeding so what is it called so weeding is very necessary since the weeds compete with the crop plants for water nutrients space and sunlight so if the weeds keep on growing with the normal crops or plants what will happen they will want or they will keep on sharing the water nutrients space and light with the uh, main crop and thus they affect the growth of the crop and some weeds they interfere with the harvesting also and they may be poisonous for the animals also so uh, now uh, we can say that farmers uh, the uh, farmers adopt many ways to remove the weeds they are adopting many ways to remove the weeds growth so uh, tilling before sowing the crops helps in uprooting the and killing the weeds so we have learnt in the first uh, class only tilling and ploughing so during tilling also if we are tilling and making the soil loose if there are some weeds in the soil they will be uprooted and they will be killing the weeds now which may then dry up and they get mixed into the soil now the best time of removal of the weeds is before they produce flower and seeds so once they keep on producing flowers and seeds what will happen they keep on increasing uh, the uh, population of weeds so before the weeds grow flowers and seeds we need to remove then only so we can use this kurpi with the help of kurpi we can remove the weeds physically from the ground uprooting or cutting them from time to time so this is done with the help of mainly kurpi if we are using with hands now seed drill is also used to uproot the weeds from the agricultural uh, fields now there are certain chemicals like weedicides which are called weedicides what the weedicides are doing they are certain chemicals which are being sprayed uh, in the in this um, uh, agricultural land so these spraying of weedicides they uh, kill the weeds and uh, they do not damage the crops also but weedicides are should be diluted with water and they should be sprayed that much only what amount is needed now these weedicides what is they are doing during the vegetable growths and before uh, flowering and seeds formation of the weeds they are being sprayed uh, they are not affecting the crops but they are affecting the health of the farmers because they are chemicals and while spraying if they these the farmers are inhaling these weeds what will happen these chemicals are uh, going inside their nose and mouth and it is affecting their health so what should they do they should cover their nose and mouth and with a piece of cloth during using these chemicals so now we will be studying about the harvesting of these chemicals right now what is harvesting of this crop so we have already spoken about the Uh, removal um, of this weeds and all now we are going to discuss about harvesting of this crop so what is harvesting so harvesting of the crop is very important that is cutting of the crop after it is mature so once the crop is mature we need to cut it down so that is harvesting the harvesting of the crops is pulled out or they are cut close to the ground it is usually taking 3 to 4 months for a cereal crop to mature so 3 to 4 months it will take for a cr- this uh, plants the crops to mature and they should be harvested the harvesting is done either by a sickle so what is it this is sickle so it is again a tool which is used to cut down the mature crops and or it is by the machine which is called a harvester now in the harvested crop the grain needs to be separated now the grains uh, with the full stalk is being harvested or being cut then this uh, grains need to be sh- uh, separated that that is called threshing the process of separating the grains from the chaff it is called the threshing so this is carried out with the help of a machine called combine which is uh, in fact it is uh, called the harvester as well as thresher so it is harvesting as well as um, it is uh, mm, helping to remove the Uh, harvested crop from the shaft so it what it is doing it is uh, it is separating the crop the grain from the the seed grains from the shaft and it is also using to harvest so it is harvesters as well as a thresher so after harvesting we, now this is a combine so it is a harvester as well as a 
thresher this machine is called the combine so after harvesting sometimes we have seen stubs are left inside the field which are burned by the farmers so she knows that it is causing pollution now this burning of the this uh, burn this stubs are causing pollution and it may also catch fire and damage the crops lying in the fields so uh what should we do with this we should uh, try to store these stubs properly and it should not be burnt in open field so that it is causing air pollution so uh there should be other methods uh to prevent this uh pollution uh, which or it may it may be kept uh, in another place and where it may be used for composting and de decomposing this uh, stuffs may also be done so farmers with small holdings of land do the separation of grain and chaff by winnowing so this winnowing this is a method so winnowing machine this is a winnowing machine these are like small uh, fields so uh, farmers which are having small holdings of land they do the separation of the grain and chaff with winnowing they don't use the combine that is used in uh, large agricultural fields but those who are having small lands they do it by winnowing so this all you have already this stuff you have already studied in class 6 so now uh, we can say that har there are several harvest festivals which are being celebrated in india so after 3 or 4 months of hard work there comes the day of harvest the start of uh, golden fields of standing crop laden with grain it uh, actually fills the hearts of the farmers with joy so they have put so much effort to grow the crops now they, that crop is has turned golden in the field and these standing crops will create a sense of well being the efforts of the past season have borne fruit so they enjoy a lot so this period of happiness is celebrated all over india so it is the festival of harvest so there uh, now uh, there are so these festivals like pongal baisakhi uh, nabanya bihu and all which are celebrated as festival of harvest right now next comes storage okay after harvesting you can't keep the grains like that you should store it properly so storage of the products is an important task so if you are uh, keeping the harvested grains for a long period of time unattended moisture insects rats and microorganisms will be there so harvested grains uh, grains have more moistures so they should be uh, like if the harvested fresh grains are stored without drying they may be spoiled or attacked by certain organisms and they may germinate also inside the storage so hence before storing them the grain should be properly dried in the sun to reduce the moisture content and it also prevents from the insects like bacteria fungi and all okay so these are the uh, we can say that these are the uh, places where these are the storage for grains is done okay so these are the cold storages or the places where the grains are stored after harvesting is it clear so these are the gunny bags in which the grains are stored so farmers store that in jute uh, jute bags and in metallic bins also the large scale storage is done in silos or granaries so that diagram only we have seen here so this is silos or uh, these are granaries right so they are protecting them from pests rats and insects so dried neem leaves are very much essential which are used for storing the food grains at home also for storing large quantities of food grains and grow down specific chemical treatments are are done and uh, pest control is being done to protect them from pests and certain organisms right so uh, another thing which we are adding here is uh, foods food and animals so after Uh, many people living in coastal area they consume fish and major part of their diet in previous classes we have already learned that right so similarly animals reared at home in farms have to be provided with proper food shelter and care so when this is done in large scale that is animals when they are grown in farm in large scale that is called animal husbandry okay fish in good health fish is good for health and it has having uh cod liver oil uh from fish and which is rich in vitamin d also 
so uh, this is all for today's class we have already completed this first lesson that is crop production and management in three different classes go through it and please do the lessons also so what you have learned go through it what are the key words we have learned about animal husbandry crop we have learned about fertilizer granaries harvesting irrigation kharif crop manure plow rabi seeds silo sowing storage threshing weeds we decide and we knowing so each and everything we have studied in all the three lessons please go through it if you are having any doubt any queries please do write in my comment box so here are several exercises uh, i am showing here please try to do it on your own if you are not getting it uh, these are very easy if you have gone through the lesson which i have taught you you will be able to answer if you are having any doubts any queries just ask me Uh, in the comment box you can write your queries i'll get back to you in the next class so do the match the following also so what is there you just do it uh, give two examples write a paragraph in your own word regarding preparation of the soil weeding sowing threshing i have told you everything so just do this exercise once uh, you are um, done with all your um, three episodes which i have taught go through it learn prepare write the answers in a answer book or um, uh, and just if you are having any doubts please ask me uh, right in the comment box and please do subscribe to my channel to get more the more of these updates which i'll be posting in the coming days um, as you know that i have already uh, taught many lessons in eight icsc please do subscribe those who have already subscribed to my channel please do say, share it with your friends those who are in icsc also i have taught in icsc and i have started teaching in cbsc too i'll be coming with more lessons so stay tuned stay updated with all my lessons thank you